Welcome to this broadcast. I'm Ken Worthy with NCUA's Office of Consumer Financial Protection. Service members returning to civilian life and transitioning to veteran status can involve many unique challenges. On this broadcast, we will focus in on a few of the financial challenges transitioning service members may face and also discuss some of the resources that are available to help. We are again have the pleasure of being joined by Carol Kando Pineda. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. And a quick note to our viewers, the views and opinions during this broadcast are those of the presenters and do not reflect the official views of nor should be considered an endorsement by the NCUA, its board of directors or staff. Carol, many service members, veterans and their families are served by credit unions. According to the Nonprofit Trade Association of Defense Credit Unions, Defense Credit Unions serve over 23 million members and have over $220 billion in assets. It's important to note that many credit unions provide free financial literacy and counseling, as you know, and if you, the viewer, like more information about that, you can visit mycreditunion.gov, and to locate a credit union, you can actually click on the credit union locator tool on mycreditunion.gov. Carol, what are some of the top consumer issues that might arise when a service member is returning to civilian life? So the top issues would be the things that you might expect, right? When you transition from military service to civilian life, you're going to need to find a place to live. You're going to need to find a job. Um, maybe you're going to be relocating. Um, and then you might also need to um, use your GI benefits for some education if it's going to help you get a better job or change into a different career. Wonderful. Now, budgeting may be one of those critical things that a transitioning service member needs to pay attention to. Right. What sorts of tips do you have for that? Well, what you said earlier about visiting your credit union is a mm -hmm. really good tip because when you're doing that transition and you want to take a look at your budget, and that applies to any kind of a transition, when you're, when you're going from single to being married, when you're, when you're having children, um, uh, when you retire, uh, those are all excellent times to do a little, um, uh, little financial checkup on your budget. Uh, maybe tweak around the edges. Um, when you're going from the service to civilian life, there are going to be benefits that you received um, as uh, a service member that you probably won't have access to as a civilian. There will be veterans benefits that you now qualify for that, um, that weren't in the picture before. So those will change the money that comes in. Um, just like your job will be different. So your salary will be different, um, maybe more, maybe less, um, but you'll have to start to, to plan that a little bit so that you know how much money you have coming in. Um, if you're going to buy a home, if you're going to rent an apartment, if you're going to move back with mom and dad for a little while, that's all going to affect the money that goes out. And so it's just a really good time to either meet with somebody at your credit union or a personal financial manager on an installation before you actually leave the service to um, help you do that little tweak of your budget. Well, speaking of benefits, education is a big transition from military life to civilian life, right. and there are benefits available to service members, to veterans. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. So um, GI Bill benefits are probably the, the benefit that most people are very familiar with when it comes to education. Um, you can start planning for your use of your GI Bill benefits while you're still in the service. Um, some of those benefits are available to you. Uh, DOD has a site called um, TA Decide, and then there are also um, education sites and tuition assistance programs while you're still in the service that can help you kind of evaluate your long-term plan and how you want to use those benefits you know what you want your education to be. Um, once you transition uh, uh, to civilian status, to veteran status, um, there are other sites that you can look at. So um, I would recommend vets.gov. There is a really excellent GI Bill comparison tool that will help you uh, determine how you can use your benefits best and it, it helps you do a rundown of each school that you're interested mm -hmm. in and it gives you detailed information That's about wonderful. what you can get from that school and how your benefits will apply. That's great information. Now we know that there are many different components as you've already covered, mm -hmm. uh, many of them, to an individual's financial snapshot. What is one way that a service member can get that snapshot of what their financial life looks like? Sure. So one of the best tips I can give people is to get your free annual credit report at annualcreditreport.com. We all have that right. We can go to annualcreditreport.com and request a free credit report from each of the three big credit reporting companies. We can do that once a year. Uh, we often recommend that people stagger those requests, maybe get a request from one bureau in January and another one in April and another one later in the year. Since it is just a snapshot, 
Um, if you're getting three different snapshots during the year, it sort of helps give you a more comprehensive picture of your credit file and your credit history. Right. Um, why it would be important for service members is you want to get a, a, a picture of what's, what's there. You want to make sure that there are no mistakes, that um, all of your information is correct. You're probably going to be moving. And so um, when you do move, you want to make sure that um, your current address is on there, that, um, uh, that all of the, the charges that are on there are yours mm -hmm. and all the accounts on there are yours. And, and also to make sure that there's no fraud. Wonderful. And on the actual on the issue of uh, credit reports, I understand there's a new federal law on credit freezes. Mm -hmm. could, you, could you tell us more? A little sure. Bit? So as of mid-September, a new federal law went into effect that um, gives all of us the right to have a credit freeze for free. So previously, we, um, we would pay for a credit freeze. And now um, you can get it when, whenever you would like for free. And you can lift it whenever you would like for free. Um, so that helps people that would like to lock down their credit um, a little bit more. Um, uh, particularly if you feel like you've been at risk for, for prior incidences of identity theft or from a breach or, or things like that. Um, so that's a nice benefit for people to have if they feel like that's going to work for them. Um, if you're not going to be seeking new credit in the, the next few months, that might be a good alternative. Thanks for that information. Another big transition, and you mentioned it, is finding a job after military life. What are some resources that are available uh, to service members transitioning? Right. So there are a couple of federal websites, um, fedshiervets.gov uh, and careerstops.org. Um, those are sites from the Office of uh, Personnel and Management. And then uh, Career Stops is from the Department of Labor. Um, they offer some insight into various careers that are available, different jobs. And they'll give you an idea of the kind of training that might be needed, um, uh, the availability of those kinds of jobs, what careers are kind of on an upward trend, um, what you need to do, the certification you need to get, um, the training that might be involved. Uh, so that's a good place to give you an idea to uh, explore things that you might be interested in and what you would need to do to get there. So um, some of the tips that we might share with people about um, job hunting is to, um, to get every promise in writing and that sort of applies to any kind of a business transaction mm -hmm. that you would have. Um, if, if somebody's making promises to you, if you're considering doing business with them, you want to get every term and condition in writing. Whatever they promise you, if it's not in writing, it's really not enforceable. You know, it, it, it's, they can say anything, but it's what's on that paper that's going to come. So you want to do some research into them and you want to read all the paperwork. And if they don't want to give you the, the, the paperwork in writing, then you might want to consider looking someplace else. Great information, Carol. As always, it's a pleasure uh, being with you and chatting with you to discuss these uh, important topics. Um, do you have any other different links? You said military consumer, any other helpful resources? Um, I, I would just like to reiterate that vets.gov is a great place okay. for people to start um, when they're thinking about that transition so that they can look uh, for their GI Bill benefits and com compare that. DOD has lots of resources. I would really encourage everybody to look at militaryconsumer.gov, which is the Federal Trade Commission site, but it's a partner site. So we have um, lots of our own tips for service members, veterans, and uh, their families. But we also link to our many other partners in the military and federal space, and even some state attorneys general have put their information on there. Um, so uh, if you're researching an issue, it's a really good place to start, militaryconsumer.gov. And I'd also mention that on NCUA's consumer website, mycreditunion.gov, we have links to military consumer and other consumer protection uh, information. As I uh, wrap up, uh, anything else you'd like to share, Carol? Uh, probably my biggest tip is um, do your research and plan a little bit ahead of time, and sometimes it can save you a lot of headaches as a consumer. Wonderful. Thank you, Carol. Uh, this is a perfect time to remind all consumers that credit unions federally insured by the NCUA offer a safe place for you to save your money. Deposits are insured up to $250,000 per individual depositor. Credit unions that are federally insured display this official sign. Also, you can visit the Credit Union Locator tool on the NCUA's consumer website, mycreditunion.gov, for a complete directory of federally insured credit unions. Carol, as always, thank you. It's a pleasure having you on. Really appreciate you providing this great information. Thank you all for watching this broadcast, and for additional information, visit mycreditunion.gov.